on WRFP. We will call the meeting to order. Welcome to the May 4th, 2020 meeting of the Eau Claire Plan Commission. We're gonna, uh, I have just a couple of uh, things uh, to take care of here. First of all, I discovered that in our last meeting, the panelists, I didn't realize, could mute and unmute themselves. So there was a little bit of confusion. I kept trying to unmute and they tried to unmute and they ended up muted. Anyway, I will allow uh, the panelists time to unmute themselves when I call on them. So I'll see this raised hand, I call on the panelists, they unmute themselves and speak and you'll have control of your own microphones. I apologize for that confusion. The second thing is just to make sure we have all systems working for our panelists, we're gonna call a roll at the beginning of the meeting. Um, and then we will also, again, do the, uh, the roll call votes instead of raising hands. So. All right. So this meeting is being broadcast by Valley Media Works on Charter Channel 994 WRFPLP 101.9 FM and online at valleymediaworks.org. The Plan Commission attempts to conduct its meetings in a relatively informal manner with the constraint that we must deal with the issues before us in an orderly and business-like fashion. We give the applicant, um, Ms. Ness, I think you're, and Craig Brenholt, I think your microphones are unmuted right now. Um, hello. Hello, who's this? Uh, Sorry, I was getting some background noise. Uh, we do request that everyone restrict their comments to the issues before us, avoid unnecessary repetition, and be prudent in the use of time. We want to make sure that we have adequate time to review and discuss all items with equal diligence. Um, please keep your microphones muted unless it's your turn to speak. Uh, and so... This is still a new, new experience for all of us, I think. <laughs> we'll begin with item number one, which is the election of officers. And uh, Mr. Allen. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, everyone in attendance, including uh, Planning Commission members in particular. Uh, we're reviewing the uh, election of officers, which we traditionally do the first meeting in May. Uh, we're excited to have a uh, holdover in his uh, membership here with us this evening and Mr. Terry Peterson. So thank you for extending your uh, commitment, at least one more meeting here. I know the uh, appointments uh, review committee did meet actually today, so I've not heard anything uh, in terms of recommendations to council for next week, but uh, uh, hopefully uh, by the sometime next week uh, we'll have um, a determination of who will be uh, the successor to Mr. Peterson. So I should note as well uh, that uh, once we are able to all gather together, uh, literally and not just virtually, uh, we'll be uh, honoring Mr. Peterson at that time as well. So uh, details to be determined. Uh, with that, uh, we do stand before you with a request for nominations for uh, the uh, chair, vice chair, and secretary. Currently, the, uh, those would be the chair, Mr. Larson, uh, vice chair, Mr. Granlund, and the secretary, Mr. Peterson. Yeah, the secretary is responsible for uh, signing the, and approving, essentially approving, authorizing the uh, minutes. Any questions on the officers and the positions? Any questions from the commission for Mr. Allen? Uh, Mr. Granlin, did you have a question? I was uh, expecting that we were beginning the nominating process, but uh, I'll wait. All right, yes, 
If there are no questions for Mr. Allen, we will begin the nomination process, beginning with the chair. Any nominations for chairperson? Mr. Granlund. If the uh, current chair is willing, I would like to nominate Eric to continue as chair. I am willing. I'll second that. And then uh, I'll see if there are any other nominations. Any other nominations for chair? And last time, any other nominations for chair? There are no other, no other nominations. Uh, I will be happy to continue serving as chair, so. We'll move on to vice chair. Do we have any nominations for vice chair? Commissioner Seymour. Thank you. Uh, I would like to nominate the current chair, Mr. Granlund, to continue if he is willing. Mr. Granlund, uh, do you accept the nomination? Yes, I will accept the nomination to continue. Okay. Commissioner Peterson seconds. Uh, any other nominations for vice chair? Any other nominations for vice chair? And last time, any other nominations for vice chair? Seeing no other nominations, con congratulations, Commissioner Granlund. And we'll move on to secretary. Mr. Peterson is the current secretary. He uh, has finished his term. He's graciously allowed to, or <laughs> agreed to uh, come and help us out until we get another seat, but we do need a secretary. So do we have any nominations for secretary? Commissioner Granlund. I would like to nominate Mr. Seymour for secretary. Thank you. Mr. Seymour, do you accept the nomination? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Peterson, would you like to second? I will second that nomination. All right. Any other nominations for secretary? Any other nominations for secretary? And last time, any other nominations for secretary? We have none. Congratulations, Commissioner Seymour. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, that uh, completes our election of officers. Commissioner Peterson. Before we get started, were you gonna take a roll and see what plan commission members we have available remotely? Thank you for that reminder. I hope we're not missing anybody now that we've completed part of the meeting. <laughs> I apologize for that. So we will call the roll. Commissioner Seymour. Here. Mr. Christofferson. Here. Mr. Peterson. Here. Mr. Brenholt. Here. Mr. Uh, Granlund. Here. Mr. Gregert. Here. Commissioner Wolfgram. Here. And Commissioner Obeyed. Here. Well, that's a relief. <laughs> Thank you for that reminder. Okay, uh, item number two is a public hearing for a recommendation to City Council uh, to rezone from R1 to C3P a lot at 2113 Brackett Avenue. Mr. Allen. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the commission as well as the uh, public in attendance. Uh, item before you is a request to rezone property located at 2113 Brackett Avenue. As shown in the map here, uh, item number two, southeast portion of the map, lower right that is. Again, the request is to rezone from R1 to C3P. You can see here more specifically its relation to uh, such landmarks as uh, Memorial High School and South Hastings Way. 
again, the south side of Brackett Avenue. Again, uh, looking to rezone from R1 to C3P, as well as to adapt the general development plan with site plan for an office and storage and warehouse building. Did note here it says warehouse building. Just want to clarify that in the zoning code, we are referring to storage and warehouse facilities. So a little more broadly defined in the zoning code. Here's an aerial photo, uh, which is already a bit out of date, even though it's not quite two years old or about two years old. Uh, there, the buildings or houses located on the property have been removed, so it is a vacant lot, as noted in your staff report. The area uh, in question is just shy of one acre in size. Again, the property did previously include two single-family homes, again, within this R1 zoning district. As you know, over the years, the south side of Brackett Avenue has uh, uh, been subject to more and more commercial development and redevelopment. Uh, for example, to the east, to the right on the screen there, uh, Quick Trip, to the west, to the right, uh, Culver's Restaurant, as well as Taco John's. And again, this property uh, more suited in the middle of the block. Again, both houses have been removed. The lot is vacant. And again, the applicant is looking to rezone to C3P to allow this commercial development. A comprehensive plan should note does uh, identify this area as commercial development. The proposed building shown in the site plan would be approximately 8,945 square feet with multiple entrances for both employees and customers. Uh, approximately uh, just uh, less than half of the building would be used as office with the remaining uh, would be a, that warehouse or storage with four individual garage doors. Uh, Bracket Avenue is to the left, so it's uh, tilted 90 degrees here. So the north is to the left on the screen. This shows a little bit more specifically uh, some of the layout of the building. Again, the office uh, portion would be facing Bracket and then uh, moving from north to south would be uh, four storage or warehouse uh, portions of the building. Uh, the property would not be allowed any outdoor storage area uh, unless approved by the planning commission. Uh, the site does provide for 17 proposed parking stalls. See a little bit more clearly here. There are two proposed access points on Brackett Avenue. You can see at the far west end of the property as well as the far east end. Uh, as noted in the staff report, the existing site does uh, currently have two driveway entrances for those two former single family residences. The a pedestrian link is shown in the site plan, uh, which would attach, or excuse me, uh, connect to uh, the public sidewalk along Brackett Avenue. You can see it kind of hatched in the middle of the, of the building there. The uh, landscape plan, don't believe we have a picture of that or drawing of that here, but it is in the packet. Uh, it does show tree, street trees, foundation plantings, uh, bicycle parking is also identified and located near one of the entrances. Uh, dumpster and low enclosure is also shown on the site plan to the rear near the uh, storage or the storage and warehouse portion of the building. Uh, the, again, the rezoning and site plan would be also reviewed uh, by city council at their meeting next week as well. So just kind of jumping through some of the elevation drawings here again, uh, kind of uh, got modern industrial office kind of styling in the uh, proposed building. You can see here this is the uh, the top of the screen is what would be facing Brackett Avenue. Again, minus the uh, landscaping that's not shown here. And then uh, to the bottom is how the rear of the building would look. And more specifically, you can see there the top uh, of the screen is how it would look to the east with those uh, kind of garage doors. Uh, certainly uh, let the applicant to uh, have an opportunity to discuss a little bit more in detail. They did provide a uh, basic narrative. Um, some of these types of uh, 
uh, developments or buildings, uh, frequently utilized by uh, you know, con for contractor use, contractor storage, things of that sort. So there'd be an office component, again, along the front, along bracket, and then some, uh, again, smaller storage associated with that business adjacent to it. Uh, it's not strictly uh, limited to that in the zoning, but uh, that's a common consideration for that type of use with this type of building. But again, I'll defer to the applicant to talk a little bit more about the uh, proposed users and how this uh, project looks moving forward. So with that, I'll stand for any questions. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Allen from the commission? Commissioner Christofferson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Allen, I'm, I'm just curious. The traffic on Brackett Avenue is um, really uncontrolled in those three blocks and it's four lanes. What, what kind of traffic do they imagine they'll be generating that might turn left out of there? Sure, that's a good question. I may defer to the applicant to answer more specifically to that, but uh, that is certainly one item that did come up in conversations amongst staff. As you can see here, it's uh, you know, the, the easternmost driveway would most likely be suited uh, strictly for that, you know, ingress, egress for the, the storage units, the storage areas. And then to the west, kind of the bottom of the screen there, uh, that would most likely be utilized uh, more for the office, uh, strictly office users. So that's the kind of the intention that staff was uh, assuming with the kind of separation of the driveways rather than just having one common driveway, having kind of separation of those uh, customers from occupants, as it were. But uh, I'll def that's a good question for the applicant to further define. Any other questions for Mr. Allen? Commissioner Gregor. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Allen, there was reference to street trees. Um, I guess I'm not seeing them on the, the site plan. Are, would they be between the parking lot and the public sidewalk then? That is correct, and uh, I know Mr. Petrie's on the line as well, and uh, he may have some additional information to share that is not in the PowerPoint here before us. But that's my recollection without seeing it in front of us here. Just as a follow-up to that, I, there's also the property line on the east that doesn't appear to have any trees planted. There may or may not be room for it given how much space is devoted to parking, but I, I guess that would be part of my question maybe to the applicant if, as to whether trees could, could fit as a buffer between the businesses to the east and the, and the property in question. Yes, thank you. That's a good question for the applicant to clarify. And again, apologies, don't have the landscape plan here to put on the screen at the moment. Okay. Uh, any other questions for Mr. Allen? All right. I see none. And would the applicant raise your hand, please? That's what I thought. All right. Mr. Bohan. Yes, sir. Um, good evening, Mr. Chair and Commission members. This is Sean Bohan at 1504 Sherwin Avenue, Eau Claire. Um, I'm here representing uh, the developer. Um, I guess a couple questions to uh, start off with about uh, the business itself, it's for a property management company. Um, the garage stalls, the storage is actually for um, the property management. It'd be storing, say, lawnmowers, uh, snowplow trucks, that type of stuff that would be um, needed for um, taking care of their facilities. Um, they're not looking at like renting these units out, that type of stuff. So it's all you know, one business. Um, and, and the question in regards to yeah, some of the some of the trees and bushes. The the property that's on the east side, or at least the the distance between the back of curb and the property line, um, we'd have room for. We wanted to put some some bushes, that type of stuff. Um, we have about five and a half six feet 
um, maybe some some smaller pine trees or, or some types of hedges and that type of stuff could fit there, but I don't know if we'd be able to end up putting um, you know, full-size full trees type of thing. So um, stormwater management, um, we are taking care of it water quality-wise. Um, there is a stormwater, a regional stormwater facility that ends up being to the south um, that, that takes runoff from this site, so we will be discharging to that. Um, but other than that, I'm, the applicant or the developer doesn't object to any of the conditions that are placed on it, um, and I'm here to answer any of the questions. Okay. Any questions for the applicant? Ms. Uh, Commissioner Gregor. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Bohan, the, the street tree question, like in front of the building up facing Brackett Avenue, do you know if there'll be room to put some trees on that on that green space that's between the parking and the public sidewalk? We we do end up having two trees basically at the entrance, um, and there is enough room that's in there. We do have electric that goes through that easement um, and stuff, but we can certainly end up putting some some smaller ornamental trees to, to fill that area now. We are looking at possibly saving some of the existing trees that are on the site um, that are showing, uh, I think, on a couple of the sheets, particularly um, along the western property line. Um, and we kind of placed in that stormwater facility around around those to try to end up saving a couple of them. Um, but, but out front, we can certainly end up seeing if we got a little bit more room to put some maybe where the pedestrian um, access is out to the sidewalk and bracket. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions for the Commissioner Christofferson? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Bohan, uh, the question that I raised about uh, traffic, it, it sounds like this is not uh, retail and would generate very little traffic. Is that your understanding? It, yeah, it's correct. I mean, it's a, it's a property management company. Um, Entrance that ends up being on the east side, again, would end up being for essentially the maintenance vehicles um, going out um, you know, to their facilities. And then the, we foresee um, the entrance that ends up being in the west um, for people coming in, um, maybe signing leases, that type of stuff, um, and, and possibly employee parking, that type of thing. But we did end up putting some stalls along that east end that's that we're looking to end up doing the employee parking for. Thank you. Okay, any other questions for the applicant? All right, I see none. Thank you, Mr. Bohan. Thank you. Uh, this is a public hearing. So are there any members of the public who are attending the meeting um, to speak on this topic. Any members of the public here to speak on this item? All right, I see none. Uh, Mr. Bohan, if you would be kind enough to hit your hand button again so your hand is not showing. Thank you. Um, I will see if there's a motion. Commissioner Seymour. Thank you. I move uh, approval. Second. Commissioner Christofferson seconds. Any discussion? Commissioner Gregor. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you know, I appreciate the, you know, the use of this space. I mean, I think it's uh, appropriate to do the rezoning. Um, just some particulars on the site plan. I, I appreciate the, you know, trying to to save some of the existing trees, but I, it is a it is kind of a difficult area of town for uh, vegetation. <laughs> There's not a lot out there, so I'd love to see, um, you know, any opportunity in front of the building and to the east, uh, some additional planting. So, um, I'd like to make a a motion to add a condition um, 
basically to amend the the um, proposal to uh, add a condition that that bushes be um, included on the east side if possible uh, of the property and some small trees uh, small street trees in front of the building uh, near the near the front sidewalk okay is there a second for that motion mr seymour thank you i'll second that motion any discussion on the motion regarding trees and bushes? Uh, Commissioner Wolfgram, did you have a comment? No, I was seconding, but then Mr. Seymour did. Thank you. Okay. Um, seeing no discussion then, we will call the roll on the motion to amend. Commissioner Peterson. Aye. Mr. Christofferson. Aye. Mr. Seymour. Aye. Commissioner Brenholt. Aye. Uh, Granlin. Aye. Gregor. Aye. Wolf Graham. Aye. Obeyed. Aye. And the chair votes aye. So that motion passes, the amendment passes. We're back to the uh, item as, as amended. Are there any other, is there any other discussion? I see none. So we will call the roll. Commissioner Peterson. Aye. Christofferson. Aye. Seymour. Aye. Uh, Brent Holt. Aye. Granlin? Aye. Gregert? Aye. Wolfgram? Aye. Obeyed? Aye. And the chair votes aye. That item passes. Congratulations, Mr. Bohan. Item number three is a public hearing for recommendation to City Council for rezoning from C2 to R3P, an area west of Jeffers Road between Prairie Lane and North Crossing. Mr. Petrie. Good evening, thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, plan Commission members and members of the public before you tonight uh, is a rezoning from C2 to R3P and to adopt the general development plan for multifamily uh, three apartment buildings uh, shown on the map is number three on the north side, northwest side of the community. Uh, the property owner is currently RCU. Uh, the offer to purchase has been submitted and accepted, uh, and they are asking for the rezoning from C2 to R3P, shown on the screen. Uh, to the north is a large vacant uh, farm area. To the east and to the south is currently zoned R3P, uh, and then to the west is EO Johnson. Uh, light industrial plan development. Um, the property is approximately um, 2.76 acres. It's been for sale for numerous years. Uh, RCU Bank was proposing to build a branch there, but they have backed out of those plans. It's been for sale for numerous years. Comprehensive plan shows it as potential commercial along with medium to high density housing uh, similar to the east and to the south. Um, so before you tonight is just the rezoning with uh, general development plan. Uh, in your packet, there is a narrative uh, explaining this is a uh, proposal. The eyes shown on the screen, you can see the, uh, the land is vacant. Across the street is vacant as well. And then you see E.O. Johnson to the, to the west and the multifamily and the holiday station to the south, along with the North Crossing. Um, and then Jeffers Road to the east. Uh, the city actually owns the... Uh, the corner lot of North Crossing and Jeffers Road on the northeast side, and then you see the multi-family as you approach uh, Jeffers Road going northbound. Um, so before you this evening, again, uh, the proposal would be for one, to continue with one lot, three eight-unit multi-family building with a uh, mixture of, shown on the screen, with a mixture of two of the three-bedroom units. Each of the units would have a two-car garage. 
the applicant is uh, going to do this in phases potentially if this gets approved they will have to come back at a later date to do a final site plan and that would just be uh, reviewed by this commission at a later date um, the city council will review this uh, application uh, next week monday again the conference of plans notes as a mixture of commercial along with uh, high density medium density residential um, the one of the concerns that staff had um, going past the site and when I visited the site, put the sign out there, uh, is the highway noise from the North Crossing, Highway 312. Um, there is a concern with that. There's been some conversation between staff and site commission members uh, to consider how do you reduce the noise level along uh, the North Crossing. Now, there is a controlled intersection. Uh, at Jeffers Road and North Crossing, but the, the volume of traffic and the, the amount of traffic and the noise of that traffic uh, does add a, quite a bit of noise to the site. Um, the, the site does show one access point from Prairie Lane uh, to the driveways for each of the buildings, and then they do a wraparound of the parking through each of them with the attached garages as their concept plan. They are showing some kind of buffering between uh, the building or from the property line and the uh, buildings and then the driveway. Um, not 100% sure what the dimensions is there. Uh, there is a conversation about a berm potentially being added um, that should be discussed this evening. Within their narrative as well, um, they have de described the, uh, the site and the details. Again, the final site plan would have to come back to the plan commission at a later date. Um, the end of report too is the concept grading and drainage that would need to be reviewed by the DOT at a future date, along with public utilities, traffic and transit. Um, with that being said, uh, Mr. Allen and myself are available for questions this evening. Okay, uh, any questions? from the commission for staff. Commissioner Gregert. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Petria, the, I guess, the, you know, my main concern is the the noise from the traffic as well. I actually recently rode my bicycle <laughs> on the north crossing a little bit um, because I had to make a connection relatively quickly. But um, so I can't really imagine living there. But the I guess my question would be if there is if there's really enough room to do a, a buffer. And if there's not, would it be acceptable to do some sort of wall? And do we even have examples of walls constructed for this purpose in the community? Yes, excellent question. Um, the applicant may explain a little more of the concept of the stormwater areas uh, south of the building, between the building and the drive, driveway around. Uh, it doesn't appear that there is much distance between the uh, proposed planting proposed driveway around and then somehow getting a burn uh, within the site. Um, and for a wall, I am not too familiar with this area having walls and I don't know the standard that uh, either the DOT uses or the city would use. Miss um, Ness is on the call. She might have more information about uh, DOT walls or state walls that have been placed. Uh, I'm still not sure if there's enough room between the property line uh, and the proposed driveway around. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Peterson. In, <clears throat> in my opinion, if you put if you put a wall up there, in that it would only go across this property. There would be a lot of noise. There would be a lot of noise that would come around the east and the west end of the wall. So it may not be that effective. 
there probably isn't enough depth between the driveway and 312 that you could put a, an effective berm in. It would not be tall enough, and even with plantings, um, they're more cosmetic than anything else. So I think you're probably stuck with what you're looking at here. They could put up plantings in there, which are more cosmetic than actual noise reduction. Uh, Ms. Ness, did you need to add something or your microphone? Mr. Peterson, you are also just that the location of these two, the proposals are very similar to the location of the home. You are, Ms. Ness. In relationship to the North Crossing, industry wise. Ms. Ness, we couldn't really understand you. Uh, I'm not sure what's happening, but it's real garbled. Can you hear me better now? Well, we could make it out, but maybe move your mouth, move your head back a little bit from the microphone. Computer or a phone? I can call in. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Allen suggesting that you disconnect and come back in. Ms. Christopher, uh, Commissioner Christopherson, did you have? No. <laughs> Just log log out and then log back in, Mr. Allen suggests. Okay. Commissioner Christopherson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm going to just wonder out loud because um, at, at what point would the uh, applicant have to give a, a drawing to indicate that suitable sound barriers are feasible. Would that be after this vote? And would, would they be somehow dependent on one another? This vote and... So it's interesting we can't see half the other people. Um, so uh, again, this is general development plan, so it could be a condition of approval here that when it comes back as at the site plan stage, it would need to have those details outlined. So that's typically what we see. So for example, you know, we, we don't see building elevations here. Uh, this is a represent, representative uh, layout of what the landscaping could be, but it could be something different. You know, it could be recommended to be more dense. Uh, perhaps it's more aesthetic than, than anything, but, uh, uh, one thing, again, we were trying to look at the difference between this area and essentially Kitty Corner, uh, which was approved two years ago and built last year, uh, uh, kind of at the end near the uh, Home Builders Association building. Uh, again, almost Kitty Corner, but uh, sitting up higher, probably about 18 to 20 feet, we were estimating already having some existing uh, tree line in there. It actually does sit closer. That uh, development is actually closer to the roadway of the North Crossing, but again, it has some top topography and some existing uh, tree, um, I guess, uh, already in place. But uh, in this case, for example, not you know entirely sure how, how much room is there. Uh, perhaps the driveway along the south side there could be narrowed. It's 24 feet, it could be 20 feet. There, there's some options that without having the best and preferred recommendation from staff of kind of putting it back on the applicant to uh, to come back at that site plan stage, perhaps to uh, provide some additional options or their preferred option. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Um, because as I look just at this uh, drawing, um, the stormwater ponds actually offer about as much space for berms behind the building in the between the driveway. 
so that if so if the developer has has some ideas I'd, I'd prefer to see their drawings in my conjecture thank you Ms. Ness, let's try it again. Okay, can you hear me now? It's, it's, a, it's a little bit better. You just, maybe you could turn your speakers down. Turn my speaker down? Yeah, I'm wondering if we're getting some feedback. Okay. Is that a little better? Not really. Go ahead and just speak slowly and uh, we'll see if we can make out. Pardon? So I guess what I was going to say was that I agree with Mr. Peterson about the law and that uh, the building, similar to what Mr. Allen was discussing, the location of those are um, approximately the same distance away from the North Crossing as the multi-family homes along Van Ness So the distance is about the same from uh, the proposed multi-family buildings as the multi-family buildings on Van Ness um, There is more of a tree buffer uh, along Van Ness Parkway behind the buildings. Okay. <laughs> okay. It sounds like she was repeating what you said. All right. Thank you, Ms. Ness. I think that's as good as we're going to get right now. Um, any other questions for staff? Mr. Gregor. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this is kind of a, a point, um, and you know, maybe something more for the site plan, the more the final site plan later. But um, you know, I, I like how there's a, a, a proposed sidewalk connection to the to the east toward Jeffers Road. But I understand that river, that Prairie Lane will be reconstructed at some point in the future. So. I uh, just wanted to confirm that it would, you know, if Prairie Lane is reconstructed and there is a sidewalk, we could ask the, we could have it be a condition in the final site plan later that there be a sidewalk link on the west end of the property north to Prairie Lane sidewalk. So I guess that would be a question for staff at this point. Mr. Yeah, uh, that could be added as a condition. Um, if that was ever reconstructed, the uh, the owner would have to connect that sidewalk uh, to Prairie Lane. Now they are showing, just so you're aware, on the eastern end of the property, they are showing a, a potential sidewalk connection with a little turnaround for emergency personnel um, on the future of Jeffers Road uh, when that's reconstructed in the uh, future date as well. Thank you, I Mr. guess a, as a follow-up to that, do we know when Jeffers Road is going to be reconstructed? Yeah, excellent question as well. My understanding is um, that is scheduled for 2021. Um, they are working with the county and the state on that as we speak, and engineering is working on the plans as well. If, if I could add uh, real quickly to that, um, and to kind of fill in for Ms. Ness, uh, she did state to me kind of end of the day that uh, Jeffers Road has been delayed due to uh, delayed to 2022 rather than 2021. And that has to do with uh, some of the purchasing of the right of way. So uh, again, it's still um, kind of going through the progression, but uh, would be probably two years out before the Jeffers Road um, uh, sidewalk would be considered. All right. All right, thanks. Any other questions for staff? All right. Um, and if the uh, 
applicant is here, please raise your hand. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, Ryan did a good job of uh, explaining exactly what um, the developers are looking for with the multifamily. Um, we understand the concerns with uh, noise abatement, um, proximity to uh, the North Crossing. Um, there is quite a distance. I, you know, I want to, and it was um, talked about earlier about the distance from our property line actually to the edge of pavement um, of 312. Um, it's quite a ways. Um, I know that it's it's still uh, going to end up having the noise, and we're, we're hoping to end up using uh, more of a, a vegetation and stuff like that to be able to knock down that noise. Um, we'll certainly try to, during the site plan um, phase of this, that we'll certainly try to move that access road as far to the north as possible to be able to give um, uh, more of a, a screening and, and noise abatement and maybe we look at it a little bit differently and actually put that closer to the building and try pushing the uh, you know the drive access maybe closer to the property line um, so there's different things we can certainly end up trying to do um, to to knock that noise down um, I know that it was brought up that it would be tough to, uh, to to do the abatement for the entire property, seeing as we'd have to end up basically taking it along both the east end and the west end. Um, you know, otherwise, you're gonna you're basically gonna have kind of that that noise coming through and stuff. So um, we don't want to wall off the entire facility either. So, um, but we are understanding that that uh, you know we have to look into a number of different things. Um, in order to be able to knock that noise down. Um, and again, it's just a general development plan um, and a rezone, and we will be coming back um, if approved um, or recommended for approval by Planning Commission and approval by City Council for the rezone. We will be back in uh, sometime probably in the third week of June. Um, and with that, I'll answer any questions. Any questions from the Commission? Commissioner Peterson. Just a thought, then, since there's so much, there's so little room between the buildings and, and actually 312, um, I don't know what you can do architecturally if you could somehow beef up the southern walls. Uh, you know, if you're going with two by six walls, maybe go with two by eights on the south, just to, and, and maybe some more uh, substantial windows to give some more buffer and kind of screen it that way if, if, if you can't do anything outside uh, with the noise abatement. That's just something to think about. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Wolfgram. Thank you, Chairperson Larson. Good evening, Mr. Bohan. I wanted to clarify in the, narr in the narrative uh, where it's stated that this development is in the public's interest because it is consistent with developments currently in the neighborhood. Country Meadows and Glen Village communities are workforce housing, which of course is in our public's best interest. So um, when I investigated those, those rents, they're approximately about 950, less than 1,000 for a three-bedroom, less than 800 for a two-bedroom, which is very consistent with workforce housing. So that's approximately 50 to 70 percent of our average median income. So I was just wanted to know if the developer then is planning on rents consistent with this workforce housing in those two communities. Um, that w I would have to end up deferring that to the to the developers. Um, we can certainly pass that information on when we come back, hopefully at the uh, site plan stage. But we'll certainly um, talk with them about the, the workforce housing and at least the um, the range and the rents. So I appreciate that, and that would just be verifying.
clarifying what you already have in your narrative, which is what I was clarifying. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? I have one, Mr. Bohan, um, on the site plan or the on the uh, drawing here. It shows that this uh, service road sort of that goes along the south side of the development. Um, I'm sure there's a simple answer to my question, but is there a reason we couldn't just have, you've got one, two, three, four parking lots here. Um, is there a reason that each parking lot couldn't have a, an entrance onto Prairie Lane, eliminating the service road and allowing more room for sound buffer? Uh, good question. We'd, we'd love for the, for, uh, uh, the city to end up giving us multiple driveways off of Prairie Lane. We were just uh, told that we were limited to one. Okay. okay. I figured there was a... All right. Thank you. Uh, any other questions for the uh, developers? Commissioner Wolfgram, did you have another question or... No, my apologies. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bohan. This is a public. This is a public hearing. So I've been thinking through this because it appears that there are more than just applicants here. Um, if you are here to speak on this topic, there should be a a hand raising feature on the uh, on the computer there that you can let me know that you want to speak. Otherwise, we have a call in user. Oh. Uh, We'll start with uh, Mr. Radabaugh. Hello, Jamie. Hello, how's everybody doing tonight? Good. Good, good. Thanks for uh, letting me speak. Um, I'm with Commonweal Development, uh, Jamie Radabaugh. Um, we're still doing addresses, but at 3714 East Wind Drive currently. Um, and uh, Commonweal's been listing the property, I guess we're probably a couple years into that listing. And, um, <clears throat> This is, uh, this is probably the only serious conversation we've had is with the, the group that has it in our contract. Um, and it's been there for quite a while. So hopefully everybody uh, sees the, you know, that this buyer is somebody that can make some use of that property and, and, and supports their, uh, their application tonight. Um, and uh, I'm here to answer. If there's any questions you can ha have that I might be able to answer, I'm, I'm welcome to, open to speaking. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, any questions from the commission for Mr. Radabaugh? It looks like we don't have any. Thank you. You bet. Thanks a lot. And uh, any other members who are signed in by computer or any other members of the public who are signed in by computer and wish to speak on this, you can raise your hand. I'm going to check with call-in user number five since that person doesn't have the ability to raise their hand. Um, one moment. Oh, here we go. I'm going to call you call-in user number five. Did you have any comments on this topic? Someone calling in on the phone? Okay, we'll move on. All right, so we will see if there's a motion. Mr. Seymour. Thank you, I move for approval of the rezoning request. And Mr. Christopherson. I would second that. All right, any discussion on uh, this rezoning? Uh, Commissioner Gregert. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I am a bit concerned about not being able to find a reasonable solution to abate the noise, but I'm, you know, I think I'm willing to, you know, let them get to the next step and see what they can show us uh, when we get down to the final site plan. So I'd be 
I'd be willing to support this at this juncture and keep in mind that in the future I may have some amendments, particularly with the Prairie Lane connection for sidewalk, but I would do that at a later time. Thank Thanks. you. Uh, Mr. Brenholt, you're unmuted, but your hand isn't raised. Did you have something to say? No, I was just getting ready for the vote. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Christofferson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to, um, as challenging as this is, uh, um, express some appreciation for the <clears throat> proposal on this property that has been vacant because it is where we really want infill and I think I'm interested in hearing what the developer will come back with. Okay. Um, oh, there. Okay. Any other discussion? I see none. We will call the roll. Commissioner Peterson. Aye. Christofferson. Aye. Seymour. Aye. Brenholt. Aye. Uh, uh, Granlund. Aye. Gregert. Aye. Wolf Graham. Aye. Obeyed. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Congratulations, that item's passed. Item number four is a public hearing for recommendation to city council for another rezoning from TR1A to R1 on the southeast corner of Vine Street and Rosewood Lane. Mr. Allen. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the commission, as well as those uh, listening in. This is a request to rezone property located at the southeast corner of West Vine. I should show here, uh, it's item number four, the west side of uh, the city. Uh, more specifically here, southeast corner of West Vine Street and Rosewood Lane. Uh, the Property is uh, 3.9 acres in size, more or less. Uh, it is currently TR1A, since it was just recently annexed into uh, the city limits. You can see here it is a vacant piece of property. Again, this was before you uh, at your last meeting, actually, to uh, review for annexation. The comprehensive plan does show this, this area as low density housing. Uh, it shows a little bit more clearly here that uh, there is existing single family housing in the area. Uh, the applicants are looking again to rezone this to the R1 zoning designation, which again is consistent with the area immediately uh, surrounding and adjacent to it. Again, the property was annexed uh, to the city from the town of Union uh, just this past month. Uh, water and sanitary sewer are available along both uh, Rosewood Lane and West Vine Street. And again, the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan. Uh, the applicant has not uh, specified uh, you know, number of units or proposed layout in this area, uh, but um, from what we understand, they're looking at uh, you know, anywhere from one to uh, several uh, single family detached uh, housing units in this area. So again, just rezoning before you uh, this evening and this request would go to City Council at their meeting uh, for public hearing next Monday as well. I'll stand for any questions. Okay, any questions from the commission for Mr. Allen? I see none, thank you. Thank you. Is the applicant logged in? If so, hit your little raise the hand button. Check with call in user number five. Uh, we have one person calling in by telephone, but I can't tell their name. Uh, uh, were you here to speak on this rezone? All right. It appears we have no speakers on this uh, as in terms of an applicant. So 
Uh, we'll check and see if there are members of the public who are here to speak on this topic, a rezone at, uh, on Vine Street. I believe we do not. So I'll see if there's a motion on the commission. Commissioner, Peter. Commissioner Peterson. I'll make a motion to rezone it to R1. Is there a, uh, Commissioner Granlund? I will second the motion, sir. Thank you. Any discussion? Mr. Granlund, did you have a comment? No discussion, we will call the roll. Commissioner Peterson. Aye. Christofferson. Aye. Seymour. Aye. Renholt. Mr. Brenholt. Aye. Granlund. Aye. Gregert. Aye. Wolf Graham. Aye. And obeyed. Aye. Chair votes aye. That uh, item passes. Item number five is a public hearing for approval by the plan commission for a conditional use permit for off street parking in the 100 block of Chippewa Street. Mr. Petrie. site plans that are shown on the map, uh, two of them are six units uh, for 24 bedrooms, and then there's a duplex uh, in the middle of them for eight bedrooms each. Um, again, the property is zoned RM. Uh, that's not changing in this situation. Um, what is changing is the redevelopment of the structures that are on the site. Uh, so I'll start on the northeast corner of 2nd Avenue and Chippewa Street. Uh, that, that part of this proposal has the conditional use. The reason being is because on the north side of the alley does show additional parking stalls to allow for this redevelopment to occur. Again, this is the six uh, unit, 24 bedrooms uh, proposed by the applicant. Um, the parking is on both sides of the alley, uh, different than the eastern proposal where they're proposing along the western part of the alley and the uh, southern part of the alley. And then for the duplex they're proposing just on the back of the uh, south side of the alley. Um, the entire redevelopment isn't within the floodplain, as I would note. Um, the fill plan does need to be reviewed by the city and FEMA at a later date. Um, going through the site plan now, uh, this is the one um, that Mr. Allen's going through shows the landscape plans, pedestrian connections, sidewalks around the entire buildings, multiple accesses to uh, the sidewalk the, uh, along uh, Chippewa Street, they are showing foundation plantings around the building as well. Uh, this is similar to the redevelopment of the 200 block of Chippewa Street to the west of here that this, this commission reviewed uh, about four years ago now. Um, and most recently, a duplex was built there uh, last year. Um, <clears throat> with that all being said, the, the two uh, fiction uh, buildings are proposed and as shown on the elevation, they're similar in size, similar in uh, density. They're the exact same density and the exact same square footage. The duplex.
duplex is um, just mixing them up. So there's the elevation showing, and then the duplex is the one story uh, with the low ground basement for the other um, bedrooms, and then it has the dormer on top. Uh, this does replace the existing structures. And they're going to demolish, um, starting with phase one, which is on the west side of the development, located at 144 and 138 Chippewa uh, Street, and then they'll work their way east uh, uh, for phase two. With the report, uh, Chippewa Street is proposed within this uh, First Avenue and Second Avenue to be reconstructed, uh, as noted in the engineering report, along with the public utilities will be replaced, um, and that should be all done by September 1 of this year. Uh, public utilities, like I mentioned, will be replaced, and the traffic and transit is noted in the report. It does appear that the exterior lighting, bicycle parking, uh, dumpster enclosure, foundation planting, parking, uh, all that will meet city standards at this time. Uh, like I mentioned before, the historic rental park neighborhood uh, plan does note this as redevelopment, appropriate for redevelopment uh, within the floodplain, and that provided a support letter in your packet. Uh, there is a few conditions that need to be met. Um, otherwise, other than that, we will stand for questions this evening. Thank you. Any questions from the commission for Mr. Petrie? Mr. Uh, Commissioner Peterson. I have, I have three areas I'd like to discuss. One with the property at 144 Chippewa Street needing four parking spots at 319 Second Avenue. It's probably okay now since they're both under the same property owner, but does there need to be an easement or some sort of written agreement that if the two properties were to get different ownerships that the property on Chippewa Street would have the right to four parking spots at the Second Avenue property. With this conditional use permit, they, uh, the commission can add an easement or an agreement. Um, it's up to the commission this evening. I would really like to see that just in case, you know, for some reason, uh, let's say they sell off the property at 319 Second Avenue. Um, that way the, the property at 144 Chippewa Street still has a right to four parking stalls on the north property. So I would like to see that added. Okay, I think we can deal with that as an amendment. Okay. Number two, I didn't see any bike parking requirements for any of these three buildings, proposed buildings. Uh, did I overlook that in my reviewing the what was presented to us? I believe it's showing on the site plan. I can't see it on the screen, but I do know that they mentioned it in the uh, in their narrative, I do believe it is consistent with the requirements. Um, okay. Maybe Mr. Allen can clarify 100% on the site plan, though. Well, when that's maybe. that answer till the applicant gets on? That, that, that'd be good to clarify that. We did state in the staff report that bicycle parking is provided. I just am having a hard time showing exactly where that's yeah. located though. Okay. And then my third point, since there are apartments in the basement of some of these buildings, it looks like their emergency egress is via outside uh, windows. And I'm just wondering if there's any city requirement for uh, keeping those clear of snow and the like, because I would think snow would tend to drift in there. And if there is an emergency, it'd be nice to have those windows available for egress. Excellent question, Mr. Peterson. Um, I know on the 200 block, they have the same window wells and they have a similar duplex. The applicant might know if they do remove the snow, uh, I don't believe there's any ordinance for the city standards that we have, but the applicant may clarify of how their 
wait until they, they clear it of the ice and snow during the winter months. Okay, thank you. We'll wait for their answer then. Thank you. Mr. Gregor. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this my question is about the alleys um, to the north and east of here. I'm not sure when the last time they've been reconstructed, but is there any sort of requirement or intention as part of this project to have those reconstructed at the expense of the developer, or how does that typically work for alleys that are seeing so much activity around them? Yeah, excellent question. I would have to defer that to Ms. Ness, who is on the call. I know her audio is best, but hopefully she can answer that. Yes, we would assess the uh, property owner similar to how we assess our other improvement projects and let us do the CIP project or the CIP process. Uh, Mr. Gregor, does that answer your question? <laughs> I think I, I think I got the, the gist of it. It'll just come up as a CIP project later um, that'll be assessed in a typical way. I guess sort of as a, a follow-up question to that, actually, um, the city owns the park space to the east of the east alley. And there's currently um, some parking spaces that you can see right now on the screen that are have at least within recent times, and maybe not so much the last year since we started discussing it, but have been used by people that, that live it in the adjacent properties. How do, how do we see the this project addressing that problem um, and like clarifying that, that that's public parking um, or that it's for the, that parking is, is for the use of the park? I guess, uh, does staff have any insight as to how that dynamic will shake out as this area changes? Mr. Allen. If you guys can understand me, I can attempt to answer this question as well, Mr. Gregor. We did find that area as park, parking only, so there should only be parking in that area between Park Allen. So. That's, yeah, that, that was just going to add that, that um, it's, uh, it's already been designated since it was uh, recently identified for some improvements. Uh, that's been identified as no parking uh, okay. any longer. So it, it, and that'll just be further clarified and enforced as we go along here. Mr. Peterson. Thank you. From what I understand, from what Leah just said, they're going to remove the parking from the park area? Yes. Okay, but if they were to leave it in for park usage, what they could do is say no parking between midnight and 6 a.m., which would keep the people from the adjacent apartment buildings from right. using it then. Thank you. Any other questions from the commission? All right. Uh, is the applicant logged in? Mr. Miller. Oh. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Miller. Hello, uh, this is Joe Miller. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, Joe Miller with Investment Realty, address 4643 Old Wells Road in Eau Claire. Um, our company is looking at doing the redevelopment on the 100 block of Chippewa Street, and I would be happy to answer any type of questions uh, the Planning Commission may have. Thank you. Any questions from the Commission? Commissioner Seymour. Thank you. Um, Mr. Miller, I, I, I tend to remember from the Randall Park neighborhood meeting regarding this project that 
Did you mention that the, that the parking um, across the alley was somehow, you had some system in place to make sure that that would remain so? Uh, do, you, do you recall that? Um, I did talk about parking a little bit. Are you referring to the um, the sixplex the sixplex on the corner of Chip One Second and the parking behind that? Y yes. Do you have a? Okay. Is there an easement agreement already in place for that, or how are you going to handle that? Yeah, um, we do not have an easement in place now, but I had previously talked with um, Ryan from the city staff about an easement. And we have no problem putting an easement in place between the new sixplex and 319 Second Avenue in the event that one of those properties were sold, that parking would remain in place for the sixplex. Okay, so that, that should work for that problem, I guess, moving forward. <clears throat> Any other questions from the commission? I see none. Uh, thank you, Mr. Miller. I have, oh. oh, may I just may I touch on just a couple things? Yes, please. Okay. Okay. There was uh, a question earlier about bike parking. I know it's kind of hard to see on the site plan on the computers on the on the screen here, but behind each sixplex, we have two locations uh, for bike parking, and behind the duplex, we have a location for bike parking as well. Uh, to meet the city requirements on that. Um, and then another question was about the, um, the bedrooms in the basement and the egress windows out. We have the, the six plexes that are, we are, are proposing, we have an, another one that is very similar um, that we built behind details on Fifth Avenue. It, you might, it has the kind of gold copper roof on it, that one. But what we do is, the, the overhangs and, and the pitch of the roof, we, we have like a two foot plus overhang on it and we have very little issues with snow getting into the window wells themselves. Um, if there ever is a case where snow gets in there and we see that or a tenant calls in, um, we would go down there and shovel it out. But we, we have very little issues with snow getting in the, the window wells themselves with the way that we design the buildings. Great, thank you for that. Thank you, that was a concern, especially with last, not this past year's uh, snow in February, but 2019, thank you. Yep, no problem. Any other questions from the commission? Mr. Gregor. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Miller, I'm trying to locate the, I do see the bike parking for the larger of the the two larger of the three buildings, um, but the, the smaller one, I just don't seem to find it indicated exactly where. Um. Sure, it would be placed, the, the bike rack would be placed behind the dumpster enclosure. Um, I'm not sure if it, and I, I see it's not on the site plan that you have, but it would be behind the dumpster enclosure, kind of right in that area is where the bike parking would go. Okay. Uh, I guess, uh, like, south of the dumpster enclosure? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right. Any other questions from the commission? All right. I see none. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Yep, thank you. And this is a public hearing. So are there any members of the public who came to speak here on this topic? I'm starting to get a feeling that I'm not understanding what caller, call in number five is, but I'm gonna check one more time just because I don't want somebody to miss an opportunity to speak. If you're calling in by telephone, could you, uh, uh, do you have any comments? All right. Uh, Mr. Let's see. Where's that? Okay, is there a motion on the commission for this item? Mr. Peterson. I'll make a motion for approval of the off-street park plan, uh, 
off-street parking and approve a site plan with the requirement that they provide an easement for those four parking spots on the 319 Second Avenue property. Perfect. Uh, is there a second? Commissioner Seymour. Thank you. Second. Uh, any, any discussion on this item? Mr. Christopherson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I appreciate um, after the long conversations that the historic Randall Park neighborhood has had about uh, student housing and the degradation of um, homeowner occupied, but this kind of redevelopment um, honors the architectural style. It improves the um, residential stock and although it's, it is not uh, owner occupied, I think it's a really a, um, it, it's really a, a good answer to, to that situation and gives really safe and um, effective housing for students. I, I wanna thank the developer. Thank you. Any other comments or discussion? I see none. So we will call the roll. Commissioner Peterson. Aye. Christofferson. Aye. Seymour. Aye. Brenholt. Aye. Uh, Granlund. Aye. Gregert. Aye. Wolfgram. Aye. Obeyed. Commissioner Obeyed. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Congratulations, Mr. Miller. That item passes. Item number six is public discussion for approval by the Plant Commission uh, to approve a site plan, for a site plan for a restaurant at 805 South Hastings Way. Mr. Petrie. Thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, members of the commission, members of the public this evening. Uh, 805 South Hastings Way has been vacant for um, about six years now. Uh, one of the, the applicant is a vaccine engineering concepts and the property owner uh, is under an LLC. Currently zone C2 uh, and that's staying the same but the land use is changing for uh, Cancun Mexican Grill, Bar and Grill uh, relocation. Uh, to the north is zoned R1, and to the east is uh, C2 and C1A, and to the south and west is commercially zoned. The parcel uh, is approximately one acre in size. Um, <clears throat> this evening, uh, to reveal the site plan that's proposed for the new restaurant, uh, this used to be a restaurant. Uh, some, some of you may remember it uh, back uh, in the early, uh, or it was demoed in 2013. This commission did approve uh, discount tire store in November of 2014. However, that was never built and the site has remained vacant since then. So this evening's proposal, here's an error of photographs showing the vacant site um, on the screen. Um, these things ways to the west. Uh, Cancun Mexican Grill is proposing a 6,500 square foot restaurant with 188 seats along with an outdoor patio area. Um, with the parking around it. The main entrance will be shown uh, to the west uh, uh, facing Hastings Way. The site plan does show 64 stalls. The required parking will be 62 stalls. Uh, there's two access points, one from Sherwood Avenue uh, to the south and then one to the north on Osuna Avenue. Staff is recommending the northern driveway to be reduced down to 24 feet wide the reason being is because most of the, uh, across the street from Alton Avenue, most of them are single family residential homes. Um, as you've seen on the screen here, now we would have remind everyone, uh, Altoona Avenue, you can take a right and a left out onto Hastings Way. Sherwood Avenue, you can only take a right. It's a right in, right out. There's a median in uh, along Hastings Way. So um, the customers and clients and, and employees Entering this site would have to take a right and go northbound along Hastings Way. If they do exit out of Altoona Avenue, you can take a right or a left um, for their customers and, and employees. Um, the building elevations are shown. It is a Spanish architecture feature for the new commercial building. 
um, as shown here, uh, the main entrance, which is the west elevation, does show uh, the two doors entering in. Um, there is a door on the north uh, elevation that my understanding would be for emergency or um, emergency only. Um, the landscape plan does show a foundation planting and street trees. The bicycle parking uh, is noted on the report or in the, on the site plan and in the report. Um, it does seem to be in compliance. Um, there is no dumpster enclosure um, and should be added to the site. Now that may result in reduction in one or two parking stalls. Um, that is one of the conditions. There is a pedestrian connection from the public sidewalk along Hastings Way to the front door. Um, exterior lighting is noted as wall pack, and uh, the, the staff is asking for the applicant to provide the number of wall packs that are on the north side of the building. The reason being is because we want to less impact the existing uh, single family houses to the north again uh, with that exterior lighting plan. Um, so we are requesting that, and, and at this time we have not received that. Um, also in your report is the grading and drainage, the public utilities, uh, traffic and transit. Um, there is a few conditions that need to be met prior to this approval. Uh, for that, uh, we will be standing for any questions this evening. Thank you. Any questions from the commission for Mr. Petrie? Uh, Commissioner Peterson. Yeah, in, in looking at page 56 and 57 in our packet, looking at the site plan and the uh, floor plan, there's discrepancies between the size of the buildings. One shows it as 104 feet north and south, and other shows it as 92. I'm just wondering um, if, if they haven't really finalized it yet, whether they could allow for the uh, trash enclosure. And if they were to lose one or two parking spots due to the trash enclosure, um, <clears throat> has the parking any parking reduction for bikes and transit been factored into the uh, requirement for parking? Uh, excellent question, Mr. Peterson. I would have to defer the first one to the applicant. Uh, the second one, uh, the parking requirement would be based on the number of seats of 188, and you divide that by one per three seats, um, you would be, bear with me one second. Yeah, they're at the, they do not have any of the reductions in the required parking. So if they did lose a couple, I mean, staff believes they would still be fine on the parking requirement because they do not, uh, they would only get the 10% reduction in the transit. Uh, this is not zone central business or CBD zoning, so they would not get the 5% additional parking. Uh, for bicycle parking. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the commission? Oh, any other questions from the commission? Mr. Gregert. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Petrie, I was wondering about um, the Altoona Avenue side of the property, the north side. Um, I see that there's no existing sidewalk there and, and there's not one proposed either. Uh, if we were to require the inclusion of one, would it, do you think it would have to be a back of curb or do you think it, it could actually have a boulevard like you can see on the, the western um, end of Altoona Avenue on the western side of Hastings Way? Uh, excellent question, uh, Mr. Grigger. I'm not 100% sure. Typically with site plans, um, the commission can require it, um, but usually it's done with the CIP projects and the reconstruction of Altoona Avenue. Uh, the engineering staff would review it and, and look at where the sidewalk would go. I do know that Ms. Nash might have more comments. There would be room on Altoona Avenue to lower the sidewalk on the new site. And so looking at the street uh, weight, I believe there would be room for a boulevard as well. It would not have to be at that Okay. 
Thank you. Uh, so basically, as a follow-up question, the um, it would be a recommendation from staff if this body were to be interested in a sidewalk on Altoona Avenue that it be uh, basically a condition that would only be realized if it, at the time of the CIP project or in the future. This program was brought to you by a cooperation between NewsWorks and the City of Eau Claire. A transcript of this meeting is available for the hearing impaired. It will be available within seven days of this telecast. Call 715-839-4912 or TDD 715-839-1689.
or write Eau Claire City Clerk, P.O. Box 5148, Eau Claire, Wisconsin 54702-5148. Newsworks is made possible by continuing community support. If you would like to volunteer or make a donation, please contact us via phone at 715-839-5067 or online at valleymediaworks.org.